Hi everyone. Yes, uh, hello. Yes, yeah, sorry, I didn't do a stream on Thursday as well and didn't say anything. Happy Easter as well. It's Easter Sunday, isn't it? Yes, and uh, yeah, we've got an egg shaped candle here. I don't know if you can see, but that is, yeah, actually egg shaped. <laughs> That's the Easter thing. Yeah, welcome to the stream, everyone. Tonight, yeah, I'm just going to be reading some more of these articles out so we can discuss it, but uh, I don't really know how to group these articles for strange, you know, but these are all articles connecting them to other murders, because I, I thought that these connections all came later, but there's actually lots of articles saying that the police were investigating at the time over things like the Scientology murders, which I've covered, and Clyde Delaney and Nancy Warren, which is the Mendocino witches thing, uh, the murders that happened around that time that are suspicious, obviously. And uh, so, yeah, I just was going to talk about that. And also need to address the fact there was a mistake in the last stream that I did as well. Um, that's not um, uh, Jay Sebring's car. It is just another photo of uh, Stephen Parent's car, just taken from a lower angle, which made me think the seats were lower than they were. So yeah, I might have to. Well, I don't want to have to redo that stream because the articles are still are still good. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to read out all those articles again. So I have just corrected it in the comments. I can say that. You know, obviously, hopefully. That would, that's enough sort of thing, but yeah, and uh, I'll probably put chapters in the description if you want to skip straight to uh, when I start reading stuff out, I'll just say hello to everyone because it's live stream, hi there, Mark's here, Stephen's here, Bella and Dawn, yes, lots of people here, Capone's here as usual, Vinyl Gorilla Records, do I have a brother, no, I don't have any brothers, <laughs> no, no, I'm an only child, yeah, yeah, like I say, uh, all the Easter stuff going around as well, and you know, all the pictures of the creepy rabbits. It's amazing how many creepy Easter rabbit costumes there are, aren't there? <laughs> There's so many. Every year you see, well, it's the same ones every year, isn't it? Really. Always interesting, though. Yeah, and I haven't done a slideshow tonight. I'm just going to show the articles because, yeah, that's a uh, don't need a slideshow for everyone. But yeah, there's uh, other articles. There's lots of stuff connecting him to Stranger in a Strange Land as well, uh, questioning whether he was uh, inspired by that novel. But around the time of the trial. Because I thought, again, speculation about that started later, but no, it's all happening around the trial. It's all in these articles, you know. So yeah, I don't know what else, you know, how else to present these things. they got a group them all together. And there's just loads of interesting articles as well, like debating why it happened and all that sort of stuff. Hmm. Oh, excuse me. Tea. Drinking turmeric and ginger tea tonight. <laughs> yeah. It's good for you. Anti-inflammatory and all that, isn't it? Yeah, I'll probably start reading one out now. i go like this. There we go. Looks like the date's too faint on this one. Tape murders linked to San Jose killing scene. San Jose police said uh, Wednesday they have developed substantial leads which may link the tape murders to in Los Angeles to slayings of two San Jose teenagers last summer. Chief of Detectives Barton L. Calias said two members of his staff returned from a two-day investigation at Los Angeles with the new lead with the, with the new leads. The group of hippies, headed by Charles Manson, included Susan Atkins of San Jose. Colin said the information gathered in the trip to Southern California indicates that the cult may have been involved in the deaths of Kathy, uh, Kathy Snoozy. Sorry, let me... I can look at it bigger. Easier for me to read it. Kathy Snoozy, 15, and Deborah Furlong, 14, on August the 2nd, the girls were stabbed to death while picnicking on a hillside near their homes. No motive for the slayings was uncovered. The police said they had reports that Manson was seen in the San Jose area near the time of the killings. Collins did not disclose what, what new information he had, but these leads are going to be followed up. Police in San Francisco and in Mendocino County, meanwhile, were investigating possible connections between the Tate killings and unsolved murders in the areas including the Zodiac slayings. San Francisco Inspector William Armstrong, who went to Los Angeles in the investigation, declined to say what information was gained that might help in the Zodiac investigation. He said he wouldn't want our suspect to know. 
Mendocino's authorities were studying the possibility that the Manson group might be involved in two unsolved murders at Ukiah. The hippie cult was known to have lived uh, lived for some months near Boonville. So that's the Mendocino witches thing. So you see, there's a load of murders there they're connecting them to. I had I hadn't heard those these two women's names as well. Women killed while picnicking. Kathy Snoozy and Deborah Furlong. And they were killed while picnicking, just stabbed to death. Near their homes. In the place where Susan Atkins is from, apparently. But yeah, like I say, there's just I couldn't believe how many of these articles there were from as the trial was happening. Uh, because um and yeah, talk about the Zodiac things, and they don't name who they suspect as well. But you assume it's Bruce Davis. But there, there was a little snippet there. What what new leads have they got? They connect them to the Zodiac, and uh, they said we won't want our suspect to know. So yeah, you've got to assume that's Bruce Davis, though, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh God. Change the subject. Yeah, but it's going to rain. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. The bank holiday Monday, yeah, so of course it's going to rain, yeah. It's meant to be the first day of summer today, isn't it? Yeah, and it's raining outside right now. I just have to walk home in it. Miserable weather. It's terrible. It's warm in Texas, isn't it? Yeah. It's not that cold here. It's uh, it's getting warmer, but yeah, the rain is bloody miserable. Yeah. Yeah, like I say, there's lots of um, other murders. Like I say, more of these articles. So again, this is about the Scientology murders. Los Angeles, an investigation is being uh, conducted into possible links between the seven Tate LaBianca slayings and the November 5th stabbing deaths of two young Church of Scientology members, police said today. The disclosure came as Charles Manson, the Pied Piper of the hippie cult, accused in the Sharon Tate LaBianca killings, was returned here Tuesday night for arraignment on seven murder charges. Manson, 35, who will appear in court Thursday, was brought home from Independence, California, where he was held on auto theft charges. He wore fringe buckskin clothing and moccasins. Three other members of the Manson family were to be arraigned today. Investigation. There is an investigation going on into the possible links, said Sergeant Henry Cullum. We have to hit every angle. Detective Lieutenant Earl Deemer said the possible link was being closely investigated. The overkill syndrome was present in the Scientology deaths, in the Scientologist deaths. Each kid was stabbed over 50 times, and it was present in the Tate LaBianca murders, Dima said. Similarities between the three brutal crimes have a physical as well as a philosophical parallels. Detectives reportedly have been looking into cultism, particularly the pseudo-religious tribe led by the long-haired bearded Manson, and another group called The Process. Group The Process is an anti-establishment group formed in London, which has been known to worship Satan and is off school of the Church of Scientology. Investigators have been struck with parallels between its, its philosophies and occultism of Manson, who was known to have dabbled in Scientology and then gone on, uh, more, on in more eccentric cultism. The present investigation, according to Dima, encompasses the three crimes, but authorities were reportedly looking into links to other unsolved slayings, termed senseless in the Los Angeles area since the beginning of the year. The bodies of James Sharp, 15, and Doreen Gould, 19, uh, both recent residents of, Los, of the Los Angeles area, were found in an alley November the 5th. The young Scientologists have been repeatedly stabbed. Similarities. Dima noted these similarities. Miss Gould and Sharp lived about two miles from where the wealthy grocer Lino LaBianca and his wife were stabbed to death August the 10th. The seven Tate LaBianca slayings and the stabbing deaths of the young man and woman were apparently without motive. And all but one of the seven victims in August were stabbed, were stabbed as was Miss Gould and Sharp. Uh, Dima said investigators were also checking into a possible link between the Manson group and the death January 1st of Marina Haby, 17, daughter of a screenwriter, uh, Hans Haby. Her body was found in, the, in a bush covered covered up in the Hollywood Hills. Sorry, it gets really faint here. She has been she had been stabbed. Another young girl, never identified, was found stabbed in death to the in the immediate area a few months later. 
This was also a possible link between the crime and the others, police say. The Church of Scientology is a quasi-scientific organisation which advocates the belief that man is truly a spirit. Its chief goal is to free the soul of wisdom and the mystical group uses an instrument called an e-meter, a type of lie detector in its work with its followers. So yeah, linking them to the Scientology murders as well. And they talk about uh, yeah <clears throat> other crimes again uh, that they're being linked to. Uh, Marina Haby there, and that, that other woman turned out to be Reek Jervitz, and they finally identified who that other woman was, didn't they? Uh, mentioning all these crimes. Yeah. Yeah, Linda Kasey been admitted to a lawyer, Fleischman, about more murders, and he said in an interview, it was scary. Charles Melton moved him to protect. Yeah. Yeah, I also read um, today uh, that Manson said in prison that he killed 35 people to someone. Uh, but yeah, I'd never heard that before. But yeah, uh, he claimed to have killed more people as well. Uh, Manson did. Mm. Yeah. And he wouldn't say any more due to the attorney-client privilege about what, what Linda admitted to killing other people. And in the Yana the Witch article, it sounds like she's talking about killing other people as well, doesn't it? Well, that she wasn't planning to stop yet. <laughs> Basically, yeah, she hadn't finished yet. That's the disturbing thing. Hmm. Scientology murders. Tom O'Neill said there are two bikers that are probable in the Scientology murders. Because I thought that immediately when I heard how they were killed, it sounded like bikers did it. So, yeah, I wondered if that was the link there, basically. <clears throat> oh, hi, Frankie. <laughs> Frankie's here. Yeah. You wonder about Marina Haby and Reek Jervetson. The sketch artist for Reek looked like the dating game killer. His name was <laughs> Gene or John. Mm. Yeah, Charlie wouldn't talk about anything that involved people still on the street because of prison code. Yeah, so he wouldn't have owned up to, yeah, specifically what. But yeah, he apparently said, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, who's Kane? Well, she thinks it was is it her I was snapping at, not Glasgow Dave. All oh, right, I don't know. No one said anything to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, Scientologists, uh, Scientology, you have to have money, don't you, to get in as well. And Charles Manson didn't have any money. And there is a quote from Paul Watkins somewhere saying that he went to the Scientology place with Charles Manson. And they expected him to sweep the floor. They were going to make him earn his way in sort of thing. And he just said, fuck off. No, that's what I used to have to do when I was in prison. Why should I do that for you? And he walked out. So he wasn't interested in Scientology. He didn't have the money to be and he wasn't going to work his way up. He wasn't that interested in, in it, you know. I don't think he was really as influenced by um, Scientology. Uh, <laughs> what did I do to him? I don't know. He just annoys me, so if I can tell him. He's annoying me, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's not here. All the time, James. He, does, he doesn't show up very much. You probably just don't notice his post when he comes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Not the Scientologists who wear the ridiculous uniform. Look like they're in the Navy. Yeah, I've seen the naval uniform. Yeah, and they did have bloody boats as well, didn't they? They went around on boats. That was fucked up, yeah. Yeah. Was there because of the that was in the There's this one. Yeah, this is just another one about the um, uh, you know all the other crimes generally that they're investigating them for. But they give you a, like in each one, there's a little bit of different information sort of thing. Yes, please check out link possibility with take case unsolved murders. 
Los Angeles. Detectives from five California cities and counties meet with Los Angeles police Monday uh, to check out possible links between the Sharon Tate, Lobianca murders and other killings. The investigators declined to say which specific cases were under discussion among the unsolved slayings in the state or the Zodiac killings in the San Francisco Bay Area and two teenage girls in San Jose. Two of the visiting detectives were from San Jose and one each were from San Francisco, Napa and the Mendocino counties. Six members of a hippie cult known as the Manson family have been charged in the Tate and Labianca slayings. The nomadic commune formed in San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury district and roamed through California both before and after the murders. Barton Collins, San Jose chief of detectives, said the members of the group might have been in the area about the time of the August 2nd killings of Kathy Snoozy and Deborah Furlong, 14. The Zodiac killer has been blamed for at least five killings, four in the Napa and Vallejo areas and one in San Francisco. Governor Albert Brewer of Alabama, uh, Alabama Monday si- signed extradition papers for the return of one of the principal suspects in the Tate murders. Similar documents were on the desk of the governor of Texas. The extradition section of the district attorney's office said the attorney general for those states had promised full cooperation in expediting the cases of Charles Tex Watson, 24, in McKinney, Texas, and Patricia Cromwinkle, 21, held in Mo- Mobile, Alabama. So yeah, linking them to all these other murders, even back then, not just like after. And again, those Zodiac Kings were mentioned again, and those two girls uh, that were just killed on a picnic. And yeah, all those different murders, basically. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, Monty. <laughs> he was just a bloody science fiction writer, wasn't he? It sounds like a science fiction novel. I can't believe people fall for it. That's it. He just made it up, didn't he? And the, the fact they charge you ridiculous amounts of money to buy all the new books and all that sort of shit just seems uh, should uh, ring alarm bells immediately, shouldn't it? And it sounds like they just blackmail people, don't they? Basically, they get you to confess all your most worst secrets and then blackmail you about them. That's how it works. Imagine what they must have on people like Tom Cruise and <laughs> all that who shill for them all the time. Yeah, and the other interesting thing I found as well was just searching randomly the coordinates for where uh, Shorty Shea was killed. And if you put them into Google Maps, it shows you the area, yeah. So I can show you that as well, because that's interesting. Right, see where the red arrow is there. This is where Shorty Shea was. Well, if you go like right into where it is, uh, it takes you down by these train tracks, so that can't be like where they buried his body. It must be. Uh, possibly it's where they killed him and buried his body like nearby, which does make sense because if you was going to kill someone by a road, you'd drag him like through behind trees, wouldn't you? And then here's the road. Right, you can see there where the spawn ranch is, right? So yeah, that does it at the spot, doesn't it? And here's the ranch up here, what it looks like now. Because yeah, it burnt down in a wildfire, I found out as well, because also people say that uh, uh, the locals set it on fire, but there was actually a wildfire apparently that was all burning it down, that's what I read today. God, that sounds weird. A weird video on YouTube where they've taken still photos of the nine main victims and used AI to animate them. Disturbing. What is it? What? The the crime scene photos that when they're dead. <laughs> that is sick if that is, buddy hell. I hope that yeah, I hope it's not actually the crime scene photos, you mean. God. I've seen one where someone's taken a fo- a photo of Tex and made him say stuff, but he's saying really weird, just saying really stupid, pointless stuff. I don't know what they were doing really. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, fire spreads quickly. Yeah, and California is prone to wildfires, isn't it? Yeah, so I think that is actually plausible. I always had the impression that people got sick of everyone coming to look at the place or whatever, or they thought it was cursed and they burned the buildings down, but no, apparently there was a wildfire. And that was like, actually burnt down all the movie set things. <laughs> Where he had them generally living. In the end, it was <clears throat> when he took them out to the ranches out in the middle of the desert and that, but actually, the Spahn Ranch wasn't very isolated, it was really near a lot of places. Which is where they were most of the time. They only went to the really isolated places in the end where they were on the run, didn't they? Oh, what? It is. It's in the morgue. They've an animated Abigail Folger in the morgue. Oh, that is sick. Yeah, who the fuck is doing that? <laughs> Did Jesus burn it down? Set it on fire? Didn't like Charlie calling him uh, God and the devil. Yeah, don't change. Did you make the video? Are you promoting your own work? Come on, admit it. No one was watching it, so you want us all to go and search for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this spy ranch had burned down. They were going to make a theme park called Manson Land. I read something else today saying... um. Oh, because I was trying to Google this because there's a church right over here by um, by the ranch. And I uh, had heard that I'd read about an unsolved murder. Look, right by the ranch, though, look, this church at Rocky, Rocky Mountain Peak. And someone was murdered there in the 60s while they were at the ranch. And I didn't realize like how, so I didn't realize how close it is. But look, it's that close to the movie ranch. And a woman was murdered there as well. And I, I couldn't find the details of it before the stream. But yeah, another mad murder. Again, a woman stabbed and she was some kind of secretary and she was just alone in an office and someone came in and stabbed her, but I couldn't find the details of it for, before the stream. But yeah, I, I thought it sounded improbable until I saw how close the church is to the actual ranch. And was that there in the 60s? So I've got to look into that. Well, the topic today, I was just going to, I've read out some articles, um, connected them to other murders, basically. So I was surprised how many articles there were from the time about um, them being connected to other murders because I thought all this speculation came later. But there's actually uh, cops, the newspapers are reporting cops from all over America were coming to talk to the Los Angeles police and it was all the Scientology murders. Marina Habe, they were asking about these other two girls that were stabbed that were thought to be the Zodiac, a few Zodiac crimes and all that. So, yeah, I was surprised that they were saying so early that they thought they were connected to other murders. I thought that it was more um, speculated later people saw links, but no, the cops at the time were investigating them. So, yeah, I've just read out a couple of articles. They're really faint and difficult to read, though. So, yeah, I hope people don't find that too annoying. Haha. <laughs> There is a Manson Rock that they carved up, is there? I don't know. Possibly. I've had, yeah, they probably have carved their name into rock somewhere or something, haven't they? <laughs> There's got to be places they went. Yeah, well, I've read out everything I wanted to read out. Now, and I found you yeah, just another crazy article today. I could just show you that, that I found <laughs> that was shared on Facebook on CLOdrive.com when I was trying to find stuff about the church near Spahn Ranch, uh, the Fountain of the World cult which is the one that was that so uh, what's he called I forgot his name i was typing it earlier uh another another one that called himself jesus and put himself on a cross and that and he was killed when they blew his ranch up and it was near 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 spawn ranch and i'd had that uh charlie because the cult still existed even after the leader died and he um uh the, the cult carried on basically and they were still there and i didn't realize the family went there a lot found this article on clodrive.com so yeah that's it ventner krishna krishna venter yeah i can read that because that's interesting yeah because that's just another thing that i hadn't realized i'd heard that he had been up there once and he had been on the, the krishna venter's cross and that's the story they'll tell about seeing charlie on the cross and that 
but uh, I didn't realise that they went up there quite a lot because uh, there's this story they have about the girls showing up, several of the girls showing up, and they told them to leave, and they started calling them pigs. Yeah, well, they, they got the police, and they started calling them pigs and sang a song about pigs. So, yeah. Yeah, Krishna event. No, that's all I'm talking about. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Oh, you've linked to the AI video. Oh, God. I don't think I want to see it. Sounds awful. Probably should fucking report it. Yeah, I've mentioned him before in other things, I'm sure, yeah, because that's where Bugliosi stole the idea that he was a cult leader from. He made out, he compared him to him, you know, he stole his story, basically, and it wasn't necessarily true that he was a cult leader in the style Christian Aventer was, basically. That's probably how I've mentioned him before. And I've heard that Charlie did go up there once and um, uh, get on his cross, but the original cross that he had was destroyed when it all got burnt down. Because the, 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 they bombed him or something, apparently. Well, we find out when I read this article. Right, Chatsworth, December 11th, 1969. Uh, the bizarre Tate LaBianca Hinman murder cases took another macabre tris, uh, twist when it was revealed today that the members of the accused Manson family frequented and sometimes took refuge in a religious cult retreat with a violent scarred past. A frightened teenage girl, her mother, and an ageing sister who all lived at the Fountain of the World Commune in Box Canyon confirmed information that accused murderer Charles Miller Manson and members of his hippie hate cult several times visited at the retreat. In an exclusive interview with a team of reporters and photographers from the newspaper at the Fountain, it was further learned that several of the girls from the family, including Susan Denise Atkins, Patricia Cromwinkle, and possibly Linda Kasabian and another girl, had sought sanctuary in the retreat shortly after the Tate LaBianca murders in August. Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant, Detective Lieutenant Robert Helder, key figure in the LAPD murder pro probes, told the Hollywood Citizen News Valley Times that the investigators knew of the Manson clan's visits to the fountain. He described an inner circle of followers who are alleged to be the perpetrators of thefts, auto thefts and ultimately murder. But he said the group sometimes numbered as high as 60 persons while in the Chatsworth area. The secluded fountain community is tucked away in a tree shrouded roadside deep in the rocky boulder strewn Box Canyon, about eight miles from the Spawn Ranch where the hippie marauders made their home for almost a year. The area is sparsely settled. The fountain, which now houses 15 men, women, and children, was the scene of a dynamite explosion December the 10th, 1958, which killed Krishna Venta self-proclaimed messiah and founder of the cult and nine of his followers the two cult members who assertedly detonated 40 sticks of dynamite were among those killed in the blast and fire according to the Merle Hollis chief criminal deputy for Ventura County who headed the investigation of the grisly event sister Nakona and Mrs Todd described Manson and several of his followers as friendly and polite during their many visits they said on several occasions they gave them food and sometimes shelter for the girls and they ate with the fountain members a few times in the communal dining hall and worship area. Mrs Todd reported that on two or three occasions Manson and some of the girls took part in the commune's Saturday night skits and musical shows. Charlie would sing and play his guitar for us and the girls would sing and harmonise. I complimented them one time because they did sing so beautifully together, said Mrs Todd. Both of the women said they had no reason to fear them at the time, but Mrs Todd confided that she was very leery of them and that since uh, the story of the murders have come to light, she is afraid for herself and for the lives of her children. Her fears are based on rumours that the remnants of the clan are still in the area. Deputies and police are again combing the community for additional suspects in the mass murders. 17-year-old Virginia Todd, who has lived at the fountain with her mother and younger sister Cornelia Nine for eight years, was more vocal in expressing our fears for the, of the group. I didn't like him, Charles Manson, the first time I saw him. He was always staring at me and kept asking me to come into his bus and hear him play the guitar. I was really scared of him, said the girl. She referred to the green and white school bus in which Manson and several of the girls arrived at the retreat and lived in for a time. On several points, Mrs Todd and her, father, her daughter disagreed. Mrs Todd said the bus stayed near the retreat for only a few days, though Virginia was, sh was sure the bus was there for a couple of months. 
Neither she nor Sister Nicona could theorise why Manson had come to Fountain, whose members say they abhor violence and seek to embrace all religious faiths as being equal. However, it is known that Manson studied mysticism in prison and referred to himself as Jesus and Satan. Virginia Todd said that some of the group referred to him as Charlie the Guru and Heavenly Father on several occasions. Mrs Todd again affirmed her opinion that despite her fears, she considered the group friendly, but with Virginia's help, she was able to recall an incident in which Katie, an alias used by Miss Atkins, called her and two other women pigs. The words pig and piggy figured prominently in the murders of musician Gary Hinman, who befriended Manson, the Sharon Tate slains, and the death of Lino LaBianca and his wife. Miss Atkins is charged with the murder of Hinman. A girl now in custody also told police that the Manson directed his followers to go to the Benedict Canyon home of Miss Tate and eradicate the pigs. I think it was in September, or maybe it was August, when it happened. Sadie, Miss Atkins, was there. And three other girls came to the main hall of the fountain and said they were going to stay here, said Mrs Todd. Sister Muriel, Sister Barbara and myself told them that they could not stay here. And Sadie said that they had been told to come here, or that they had been sent here, and they refused to leave. He told her again that she could not stay and would have to leave the private premises, continued Mrs Todd. She explained that the Fountain is a humanitarian group and that when Manson and the others arrived in October or November of 1968, they had helped them. They were just dirty, nasty looking people. They looked like they needed a bath and some clean clothes and we did not mind helping them, she said. But she related that at the time of the return of the four girls, they had read about the arrest of the Manson family at a spa and ranch on charges of auto theft. We will help people, but we won't harbour criminals. It's against our rules and against the law. And we had our children to consider, said the worried mother. After the second refusal of the girls to leave, Mrs Todd and one of the fountain members went across the road to the Ventura County Fire Department station and summoned a county sheriff to the retreat. The group went up the hill and sat in their car, according to Mrs Todd. It was when Sadie was sitting in the car that she said, Why you pigs? And she began to sing a song about pigs, said Mrs Todd. Virginia, who was also present at the incident, says that Miss Atkins hated me, so she told her mother and the other woman, you're three pigs, you're the worst pigs I've ever seen. She said the deputy ordered them to leave and they departed. The fears of Mrs Todd go beyond, concerned, uh, go beyond concern for the members of the Fountain and her girls to her missing son, Hugh Rocky Todd, 15. He's been gone since October the 1st and his mother fears that he may have joined the Manson family before they left. His sister, Virginia, said the boy seemed to be infatuated with Katie, Miss Cromwinkle, and talked with her for long periods of time about horses and motorcycles. Missing along with the boys were two knives, which she and her brother always carried with him. The girl said they were given to him by a man with a long beard who lived off on, uh, lived, lived, sorry, who lived off and on at the Box Canyon commune. While Manson professed to be a religious leader, Sister Nakona and Mrs Todd said that he did not discuss the topic very much with any of the group. Mrs Todd remembered one instance when Manson observed her correcting one of the younger children and he assertedly told her, Why correct a child? A child knows what it's doing. You should let them do whatever they want to do. Virginia said most of the time the family's conversations were very confused and she felt that they were usually up on something. She related overhearing a conversation in which Miss Ask Atkins reportedly told another girl that she hated killing anything, even an animal. Manson made this pronouncement about his philosophy, why fear anything, let man do anything he wants to do or has the nerve to do. Both the mother and daughter said that Manson exerted a very strong influence over the group, which they said also included Charles D. Watson, currently fighting extradition from Texas to face the murder charges, and Paul Watkins, arrested for auto theft in a raid on the Barker Ranch in Death Valley where the clan certainly lived following their departure from the Spahn Ranch late in late August or early September. He was the Lord and Master in everything he said they did. They never questioned him or argued with him. And Mrs Todd, of, uh, uh, said Mrs Todd of the frail, penetrating-eyed Manson, who is said to have had hypnotic control over his followers. They both said that during the year the clan was in the area, they saw several women and men come and go. Mrs Todd told of a Mary who first arrived with Manson in the school bus and reportedly gave birth to a child on the bus. Virginia told of a girl named Bo, who she described as small and petite with brown hair and brown eyes. The girl called Bo told Virginia that she did something the group did not like and they would stick long pins in her. She told of Mary, a blonde-haired a, a blonde attractive girl with a college education, and Stephanie, a tall girl with kinky white hair and a very bad complexion. Also, of a woman about 30 who Virginia said was either an entertainer or a prostitute. None of the three recalls anyone but Manson and Watkins using last names. 
both the Todds said that they never heard any of the group mention the names Tate, Polanski, LaBianca or Hinman, but Virginia recalls one of the girls mentioning a big rich home in Benedict Canyon. The Todd girl, who at one time attended the Valley College, said that she thought that they recognised Terry Melcher, the son of Doris Day, as being with Manson on one occasion, but she could not be absolutely sure. So that's something. He was with them at the Fountain of the World. Manson assertedly blamed Melcher for the failure of his songwriting career for the singing group known as the Beach Boys. Melcher, who was visited many times by Manson and lived in the Benedict Canyon home before it was rented by Miss Tate. Even now, as the case progresses, the courts find the courts in the courts, the residents of the Fountain of the World would like to forget the name Charles Manson or that they ever saw him and his band. Mrs. Ann Todd and her children live in fear by Bill Milton. So that's crazy. Because I've heard that story that Terry Melcher was there when Charlie was on the cross, did these whole on the cross thing. But and one of the girls that was there confirmed it. One of the Fountain of the World girls confirmed that she saw Melcher with Manson, but she couldn't be sure. But that kind of confirms that, doesn't it? Like I said, I'd never read that he was up there so much as well, and I'd never heard that about them going up there and calling the women pigs when they wouldn't let them stay after the murders. So that's crazy, isn't it? I said that articles on CLADrive.com. I've shared it in my um, Facebook group and I'll have to share it on the subreddit as well. Excuse me, smoking. Hmm. So, yeah, a lot of people think Bill Cosby ASMR. It's <laughs> a good name. Tate was a hit, and that's why Raymond wasn't home. That's why Charlie told them before they left for CLA, make sure you kill both women. Nothing to do with Terry Melcher. Yeah, no, it wasn't to do with Terry Melcher, no. But I don't think Tate was a hit either. And Charlie didn't order them to kill everyone. That's that's a misconception as well. Charlie did not order them to kill everyone. That something went wrong. They weren't supposed to kill everyone. They were just trying to rob them. I think it was probably a, a planned distraction robbery. The girls were meant to distract them while Tex wandered around the house and stole the drugs. But something went wrong. It was a drug robbery. It wasn't anything else. It wasn't a hit. Hmm. Yeah, I'd have to look for some more pictures of him. But yeah, apparently this is where Bugliosi stole the cult idea from as well, this Krishna Venter thing. But he went up there a lot, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, this article actually ties Manson and Melcher more closely than most of the stuff that's coming out even now, yeah. So yeah, I'll have to show this to people as well. I'll share it around some of the other groups because, yeah, more people are in my group. At least that didn't occur to me until I was reading it out. Oh, bloody hell, yeah, that does, because I've had that story as well, that when he was acting like Jesus and he got on the cross, Melcher was there. And a girl, but a girl possibly saw that, witnessed that. Hmm. Yeah, Melcher is dead now, and he? he died, yeah, quite a while ago, I think, didn't he? Wasn't very healthy, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. they're lying they lie at their, their parole hearings honestly if you look, look at the facts of the matter this was fucking about drugs <laughs> that's what the whole bloody thing is about, about. and they lie they because they have to stick to the original story because they're trying to overturn their original convictions aren't they so yeah they have to stick to the story but no hmm it wasn't a hit no, everyone had a good friend who lived with them. Bollocks. No, I don't believe you. You had a friend who lived with them. There's Stephen here. Stephen says he owned Susan's baby on her lap. I'm not wrong. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. That's it. Charlie Clem and Bruce Davis has gotten into the habit of setting up and ripping off dealers. Yeah, if you look into the Bernard Crow thing, that was all about Rosina, really, I think. Uh, Bernard Crow just happened to be the person Rosina rang to get the money, wasn't it? Yeah. It's all that. Huh. There's made from photos of people in life, not the bodies. So, Because someone said there is one of Abigail on the bloody um, slab, <laughs> which is fucking, that is sick. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Melcher was a golden goose in his path. I don't think he would have killed him. No, no. Bloody Melcher was in debt. They needed him, right? Melcher and Dennis Wilson were both in debt, right? <laughs> they needed a, a hit, basically. That's why they. That's what they're interested in, in Manson was. And the drug dealing as well. Probably that's what they're interested in text was. As well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was a very shady character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know the whole story the whole story's fake for what happened with the Bernard Crow thing. Rosina was a not she was furious. She was as angry as Bernard Crow. She was gonna come up there and kill them as well, probably. She wasn't a bloody victim. Well, she was a victim in it, but she wasn't like a, a prisoner. She was furious. That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's it. Lots of Popper wasn't threatening to kill her. She was his friend. <laughs> they were friends. They were drug dealers that um, Tex had ripped off. They were both as pissed off as each other. And Charlie realised that as soon as he got there, basically. He's admitted since, hasn't he? I've done a whole thing about the Bernard, uh, Bernard uh, Crow shooting, haven't I? No, she wasn't really tied up. That wasn't true. She wasn't tied to the bed, no. And she's not a little hippie woman. She was quite a big, scary-looking woman, actually. She doesn't. She doesn't look like, yeah. A pale flower, yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, Crow made the phone call, but apparently she was ringing up angry as well. She was she was hysterical, but hysterical with anger that he'd fucked up with her two thousand dollars, you know. <laughs> but yeah, they were both threatening to come up there and kill him. Really, was what was happening. And they've just totally put out a fake story for some reason. God knows why. When they all stick to it, you see TJ telling it on chat shows in the 80s, still the fake story about, you know, Charlie's kneeling down and going, oh, no, take me instead and all this bollocks, you know. Hmm. 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 It's been here for 50 minutes now. So I could end this one and go to an aftershow, couldn't I? But yeah, that article's interesting though, isn't it? <laughs> like I say, I hadn't heard so much, that they went to the fountain of the world so much and that the girls went up there after the murders as well. After it happened. And all that about them calling them pigs and singing pig. <laughs> singing a song about pigs. It's freaky, isn't it? And yeah, and one of the girls possibly remembering Melcher being there as well. But they didn't talk about... Um, him doing a whole thing on the cross surely they would remember that if that happened up there so it doesn't sound like the fountain of the world people are heavy partiers that drink and do acid and all that so how did that happen at their place they didn't mention that yeah no, this is the money adjusted for inflation the amount of money that was spent but the same sum of two thousand dollars comes up so many times in this case i think amounts of money are getting exaggerated somewhere along the line so it's two thousand dollars from Bernard Crow, two thousand uh, dollars they wanted from Hinman, two thousand dollars they wanted from CIA Drive, and there's another two thousand dollars at the June buggy shop as well. If you read the Spy Ranch raid, it, it's like yeah, it's just weird that the same number is used every time. I think it just became interchangeable. Yeah. Hmm. That's it. It's a lot of money. But the guy at the June buggy shop said that Charles Manson always did have large sums of money. It was common for him to come in with big amounts of money all the time. Which is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He lied, he lied a lot to make himself seem more noble. That's it, yeah. He lied to make it look like, yeah, he, he wanted people to think that he was saving Rosina, but if you look into who Rosina really was, she didn't need saving. They needed saving from her. <laughs> and I think that really somehow they paid them off, and we're just not hearing about it. That's why there wasn't further retaliation from them over that. I think some of the money that they stole went to them as well. And we're just not being told for some fucking reason. Yeah. Hmm. That's it. Well, she's supposed to have just handed it straight to Charlie, isn't she? Is what she says happened that she went and stole the five thousand dollars and gave it straight to Charlie. 
but people think is that the money that they spent on the MDA <clears throat> as well, and they, the MDA never arrived, or they hadn't got it yet, or the MDA was possibly bad. But I think that the MDA probably just hadn't turned up yet, or the amount they were expecting hadn't turned up yet. So they either wanted their money back, or <laughs> the MDA. Yeah. Huh. With all the money they legally acquired, they could have bought a compound that would be worth a heck of a lot today. All the stuff was unnecessary. They could garden and all that. Well, this is the thing, yeah, they could have done better if they really were a paramil paramilitary group and all this shit, like people are saying. People think that they were some kind of terrorist organisation or whatever. They could have done better, couldn't they? They could have uh, gone to a more isolated place and built a better compound and not drawn so much attention to themselves constantly. Yeah, would Harrigan and Doyle? Yeah, because I found the, what well, they found me, the people that knew the chemist that made the MDA in Canada. And they knew Billy Doyle and Tom Harrigan. They n not the other two, never heard of Pick Dawson or Charles Tucker, but they knew Harrigan and Doyle together. <laughs> yeah, that's it, MDA from Fukowski and Folger, yeah. They're supposed that's that's the problem yeah that, that's the whole thing yeah they're supposed to have fucking gone up there because they didn't get the mda and they were they were demanding their money back or they were going to rob them or whatever but it went wrong and they ended up murdering them all yeah huh. yeah the gerardo interview's good yeah he says some interesting stuff on, on that interview the, is there more than one gerardo interview or is it just one because, yeah, the one I've seen, <laughs> Charlie says some good stuff in it. And there's some interesting footage at the end of him stood there talking to Geraldo after the interview. And it's weird how you can see the way they talk to each other is just weird. Yeah. Yeah, well, that probably was a reference, wasn't it, to the, the Manson murders, the Steely Knives bit of uh, Hate of California, yeah. No, they say knives. I think they actually say knives, don't they, in the song? It's not knives, it's knives. But yeah, I think that probably is a reference to the Manson Matters, isn't it? <laughs> That's it, used all the cash and bought their own isolated ranch and then went there dealing with, <laughs> yeah, dealing and dune bugging and helter scouting and all that, yeah. They'd gone to a more isolated spot. But looking at uh, the situation with the girls and i think they wanted george spahn to leave them the ranch that's why the girls were making such a fuss of george spahn and looking after his house and that they were hoping to inherit the ranch when george spahn died maybe they even planned to bloody bump him off so that they could inherit the ranch but they wanted to inherit the ranch and this is possibly why they killed shorty shea because the, this guy frank retz was trying to get them to uh shorty shea to throw them off the ranch and Lynette from I overheard this, Squeaky overheard this and went and told Charlie. So that's possibly uh, what that was about. I think that they were they wanted to inherit the ranch. That was why they were staying at the ranch so so much. And making so much of a fuss over George George Spahn. That's why they didn't leave the ranch. But they were idiots. They should have chosen a more isolated location. Too public, everything for what they were doing, wasn't it? Yeah. They said they could have bought land if they had all this money. Yeah, they could have just bought some land, couldn't they? Yeah, that's it. I think that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to get someone to marry him or to, yeah. Yeah, they hated Rhett's. And Squeaky says horrible stuff about him in her book. And uh, when I did the um, Shorty Shay stream, Nicholas told me about when he interviewed uh, Frank Rhett's and he showed me photos of when he interviewed Frank Rhett's, the good weird guy in the Lederhosen. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. He was out at the ranch. He went and met them and, uh, yeah, they interviewed him. Yeah. That's it. Well, that's the thing. Why didn't they target Rhett's? <laughs> why why Shay so much? Yeah. Why not why not Rhett's? Maybe uh he had too much backup or something, yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, he probably was. I think he was. Yeah, there was a lot of them, wasn't there? That actually, came over to to Germany, uh, to to America. He possibly was. Yeah, he right, did die at the ranch property. And the bridge collapse, did he? I didn't know that. I have to find more details of that. I didn't know that he died at the ranch. That's crazy. Because yeah, he was a friend of George Spahn and he was trying to get Shorty Shay to throw them off the ranch. And Squeaky overheard that. And so that's another probably another reason why they murdered Shorty Shay. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, because I'll, I'll make sure I link it in the description as well, the one that's on CIDrive.com. Because, yeah, I'd never seen that as well. So, yeah, it just occurred to me that's actually sort of backing up the idea that Melcher uh, was with him at the Fountain of the World when he was on the cross and that. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Yeah, there's been a bridge collapse recently, hasn't there? Speaking of bridges collapsing. Right, we'll be, this has been running for an hour now, so I'm going to end this uh, and come back for an after show, I think. So, yeah. Oh, what? He died by drowning or heart attack while trying to save himself many years later. Oh, what? Well, at the ranch, a bridge, was there enough water for someone to drown if a bridge collapsed? Did you say he died? Didn't you say he, he died at the ranch property when a bridge collapsed? That was, well, there, yeah, there was some deep water there, wasn't there? What? Fucking hell. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I'm surprised Nicholas didn't mention that. Because <laughs> uh, Nicholas interviewed him in the 80s, so it must have been many years later. Like, it must have been, like, you know, the 90s or whatever when that happened. Maybe Nicholas wasn't aware of it. It happened after he left America. Oh, what? He drove over a bridge that was collapsed and he drowned. Bloody hell. I'll have to look into that, yeah, because I know Nicholas interviewed him. It must have been about 1988. So he was alive then. It was before then. But what? That was... That, could that be on... That can't be on the ranch property, surely. Just looking at it on Google Maps. There's not enough water for there to be a bridge over it. Oh, there's a bridge next to the ranch. All right, so it's right, right near, yeah, sort of, sort of, yeah, considered the ranch property. Oh <laughs> god, it collapsed while Rex was driving over the bridge. Curse on him! They pretty put a curse on him, didn't they? The witches of Spahn Ranch. It's church property now. Yeah, I saw something earlier that it was going to be something like it's some kind of European centre as well, which is another weird thing because uh, fucking uh, Frank Rex wanted to turn it into a German-American friendship centre, and now it is going to become some sort of European friendship centre, not specifically German. Yeah, ah, oh, he died in ninety-seven or ninety-eight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, because like I say, he was definitely still alive in the 80s because Nicholas um, interviewed him. <laughs> Unless it was from beyond the grave. Yeah, anyway, I'll end this now and I'll come back and do an after show. Thanks for coming, everyone, though. Good turnout again. 47, yes, I didn't advertise this very widely. I only scheduled it this afternoon. And yeah, I'm, I'm off work, so I'll do a few more streams. I'm not sure like how to uh, put all these articles together. There's an interesting article talking about the rumours about this case that's interesting. So I can pull that together because some people criticise you um, for bringing up the drug angle, saying that you're trying to disparage the victims and that, you know, th and this was all just made up to slur the victims or whatever. But no, there actually is a, a lot of evidence to connect it to drugs. But there are really nasty rumours that aren't true, you know, about the sexual mutilation of the bodies and stupid stuff like that. And there's an article talking about the rumours, so we could talk about that. But also address the fact that talking about the drug angle isn't an attempt to slur the victims, you know. It's just the truth of the matter, and it has to be brought up. <laughs> because that's, you know, the truth, unfortunately. Yeah, he was going to turn it into a, a Nazi summer camp for all the paperclip families in California, basically, yeah. Well, a German-American friendship centre, so presumably, yeah, Americans would have come to it as well. They have events where they all merge together with Americans. Yeah. <laughs> Good <rubs> horses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, right. Um, yeah, I'll end this now and I'll come back and do an after show. And uh, like I say, I'm on holiday, so uh, I should get out Thursday and Sunday streams both weeks if we will find enough stuff. 
Excellent. Right. I'll see you in about uh, a couple of minutes. It's time for an after show. Thanks for coming. That ended? Come on. Jesus, taking a long time to end. 